Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Challenge All Stars for a Wrap Up Podcast for episode 10. I am Brian Cohn. With me, as always, is my co host, Al Azir. Ali, how are you? Bam, 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 bam. Uh, wow. Happy 10 years of doing this podcast, listeners and Brian. <laughs> yeah. We have uh, either just already reached it or about to reach it, or it's like a, this timing of week. So here we are, 10 years. Unbelievable. What a do, journey. Do you dispute that it should be when the podcast well, aired? <laughs> well, it, gets, like, it depends like when people are listening to it. It's like when you're listening to this, maybe you've already reached it. If you have it, maybe you already have it. I don't know. It's like we're in the we're in like the Schrodinger's box of like how we reached the 10 year anniversary. I mentioned this to one of my friends at work, and they were like, Oh, like of the podcast you're doing now or since you've been podcasting. And I was like, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They always say, if you can do a podcast for 10 years, it's probably going to last. That's what they always say. Or this will be our finale. <laughs> but it's fun. And it's episode 10. It's 10 it years. A lot of, uh, I don't know what angel numbers are. Just a lot of synergy. How about that? Great. And, not and, but not a great episode. Wrong. I wrong totally disagree with you. I saw Love your it. tweet. I saw your okay. sweeping. This is what I love about Brian's Twitter. A, it's very viral, so you don't need my support. Mm-hmm. But, um, and everyone tweets like this. It's not just you. It's like, there comes a time in every season, and we have unanimously reached that point. The season is Flaptina. At least it will be over soon. And I'm like, this episode was so much better than two episodes ago. That's so so some of us I- are keeping it alive. That That is a great way i love doing that to piss off twitter is you make that grand sweeping (laughs) assumption that i think that everyone should have and i find a lot of people do not have and then they come back emphatically strong and be like how dare you say that so that is i feel like you've perfectly tapped into how i piss off twitter and it's fun i enjoy it so when 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 i get when i get a tweet that's get going and i see like the back and forth in the comments i'm like oh baby give me that popcorn let's see what's going on here and then I get a text from Matt Ligori and I'm like, did you, did, did Brian get us canceled or no? Are we still going? Did, don't cancel us before 10 years. Let us get to Saturday and then, uh, and then get canceled. Um, well, no, I, I was disagreeing with me. This is off topic, but like the traders cast was revealed and no spoilers. If people don't want to see that, but there was no, I guess this is a spoiler. There's no challengers on it. And I was talking about how the challenge people dominated season one or last season. And I had people in my comments being like, dominate's a strong word. I don't know if you can say dominate. They two of the three people won the show. That's dominate. Get out of here, you crazy people. I see, I have the opposite reaction. When I see a strong tweet from you, especially about the challenge, and especially if I disagree, I'm like, oh, this is great. We'll have something to talk about. And I actually, at the top of my notes, I have Say this when Brian complains. Here's a comment from Robbie Freeman. Obligatory posts that they need to explain the exact rules to players before the game starts. All these hypotheticals about whether there will be one last chance are zapping the energy from the game, especially if it turns out they're going to get a guaranteed shot. So are you in line with this? What are your grievances about the episode? My major, so it's it's kind of a little bit. I kind of agree with Robbie a little bit. I think the backhand is what I agree with, that if, if everyone does get a shot, a lot of what has transpired this season does feel for naught and would be kind of a waste. But I think if there was a more definitive end to everything, I think there wouldn't be as much conversation about what they should do. Should Laurel toss herself in? Should Jay wait a week? Like if they, if Jay knows I have one or two more chances, he would back out. It's the uncertainty that drives some of the debate of like, oh, I don't know. Is the whammy going to hit the next time or can I let, like roll to push my luck a little bit more? So I don't want them to know the definitive amount of times they have chances. But if it turns out that next week, it seems like it might be the last daily and it's like, oh, if you win this daily, you get a star or something like that. That would, I wouldn't like, there feels like a gray area of like, I wish there was back there. There should be a penalty for people that don't throw themselves in. Yeah, it's interesting. I agree with you um, that we need the uncertainty in this scenario because let's compare it to like Survivor, right? Like, you know, when you're going down to a final three, you know, the final four is going to be fire making. And then Maria, spoiler alert, gets like auto eliminated and there's no even like attempt to change anything, right? Like, so there's pluses and minuses to information asymmetry or complete information and for, you know, formats be formatting. But What I liked about the last two episodes is 
I do think the decision making made it less of a determined outcome. Like I wasn't sure if Jay was going to go in. I was certain Laurel was going to go in and then she didn't like, and, and I think the whole Ryan vote is something interesting to talk about. So I thought there was like a lot of intrigue in the politics or just decision making in this episode that made it exciting and not just like a, a determined episode. Mm -hmm. I get, I just, for me, it just feels like we did a lot of this stuff last week with Laurel and Cam. Like we literally had, instead of Cam, it was Leroy who was promised that would be replaced. And like, are we going to replace them instead of Laurel promising to go in? It was Jay promising to go in. And I just am more interested in the dynamics of the women from last week than I am from this group of men this week that doing this off what we just did last week felt like, Oh, we're doing It's a repeat, but like of people that I care much less about outside of like Leroy. So I, I, I just didn't find myself as invested in the Laurel and Cara and Cam of it all last week compared to the Jay Leroy Adam slash Steve of it all this week. Uh, Matt Liguori, if you're out there, could you please boot Brian from the Kehoe's group chat? Um, no, I mean, that's, that's super fair. Um, one thing we have to address right off the jump is in the preview and I didn't catch this. Our, our great listeners in in the Facebook uh, group, uh, please feel free to join us in the Challenger Hub of Facebook group. Um, called this out, so I rewatched the previously on uh, today again. Mm. Kara says, with just one challenge remaining before the final, in the preview for this week's episode. So. Is that to mean that this daily was our last daily, true daily of the season? Yeah, I noted that too. And I when I noted in my notes, and I don't, and then I was looking at my notes and like I don't remember who said that in the context. But yeah, I noted that too, that it was like the last daily before the final. And that's where I was like very confused about how this episode played out, that it wasn't as definitive for the women that like, oh, this is it. And I'm like, for Laurel, this you're screwed. So I don't know what the next week is going to bring because it seems like it's some type of daily, or some type of event. I don't know what it is. And TJ didn't say anything definitive by the end of this week being like, you're either in the final or there's no more dailies. He was just like, all right, welcome to your next daily challenge. Welcome to the elimination. Like it was very matter of fact. So usually they don't lie in the previous season. Uh, like that, that's weird to do unless it was like jumping ahead of like, after this is the last daily. I don't know. It's a, it was an odd phrasing. Yeah, I, well, there are some theories, but let's get to that at the end. Let's save our the, the money, the money stuff for the end, and, and get through what Brian thought was a slog, what I thought was fun. Um, one thing that we haven't really talked about. I've been nervous to talk about it. Let's talk about the possibility of a Leroy win here, and what would that mean? in terms of him being a challenge champion, is there an asterisk, et cetera. Cause we kick off this episode where he's like totally reinvigorated to win for cam. He's doubling down on his, you know, energy towards the final. Is this going to be a Leroy win? And if Leroy does win, what does that say for like the energy around Leroy? Last time Leroy was in a final, we had sad and happy champagne on ice. Like, what would this mean? It's a good question because it does feel different. I feel like the vibes going into his last uh, challenge proper season and especially the final, I it did feel like such a grand event. Like this is Leroy's last stand, especially the fact he was like lit with Nani for a lot of it. It was like, can they do it? And it was such a disappointment when they fell short. This one doesn't feel like that and it's i don't know why because i do i count all stars as much in the in the world of challenge proper i feel like other people don't and maybe the challenge itself might not i don't know but i would count like this would be a win like leroy's now if they have like invasion of the champions like leroy can come on down and be a champion if he wins this but i don't know like they're making it, it it's like building up to maybe his winning story even maybe more so than they did on his last proper season but it the vibes just don't feel like it mainly probably because we've just seen all seen Leroy in finals and it seems so unlikely that he's going to win one just based off his skill set that I'm not even almost preparing myself to win because I just don't think he can win one by himself. Leroy is an interesting um, person for the conversation of sort of where challenge all stars fits in sort of the, the greater picture. Like I have never felt like a win in challenge all stars is a win in challenge proper is a win in us mostly because it's like 
they're different products. We don't need to compare them in my mind. Like it's not, not impressive to be a challenge all-stars champion. It's just like, it, it's just not comparable. I, honestly, in, in the way that maybe like the first gauntlet is incomparable to like challenge 39, you know, in terms of like what the expectation is for these people to do versus like everybody was kind of drinking and then like collecting coconuts and, you know, racing in early seasons. Mm -hmm. I think that we talked about it a lot in the eliminations this season. Like, I think it's almost most notable in this season of all stars than even the prior seasons of all stars, how sort of diet the challenges are. Mm -hmm. Um, But what makes it even, um interesting about Leroy is Leroy is probably way better suited to win a traditional challenge final right. than a puzzle heavy equalized one gender wins final so if Leroy wins the challenge all stars i will almost be more impressed than if he won the challenge proper because it just as you said seems so far outside of his typical skill set yeah if Leroy reaches a final here like i feel like he's like at best, the fourth best option to win, like without even knowing who the final star holders are, like you, you would have to put him in the bottom group of like if you're putting a chip on a person to win. But yeah, if he was like with someone in a final or you're in a team or you know it's going to be a super physically grueling one that that it could just like knock people out as it goes through, like that would up his chances. Yeah, if he somehow wins this one, maybe this is the one he wins, like the one that's the most unlikely. He just randomly pulls it out because that's just like sometimes the way the world works. Um, And then we check in, you know, speaking of Cam, from from Leroy's reaction to Laurel's reaction. I don't know what I expected from Laurel's like response in the beginning of this episode to what happened, you know, last week at the end of elimination. But she she makes sure to tell us her conscience is clear. It's it's Cam's fault for even being in the bottom. I didn't owe her anything. (laughs) It's a great spin zone. I saw a clip. Um, I know I hate plugging his podcast, but he does get some good clips sometimes. Uh, Ryan Kios was on the Zach uh, Nichols podcast, and he was talking about uh, the decision that Laurel made. And what he claims um, is that Laurel wanted to go in, but that Ryan and Nicole at like the elimination talked her talked her out of it. So like, this is not the right spot. Don't do it. It almost feels so preposterous that that could be the truth, that maybe it just has to be the truth, because that seems like such a crazy lie to be like somehow Ryan and Nicole talk Laurel out of doing something. But to even put that out there must mean it has to be true because it'd be crazy to lie. So I don't know if that changes like our perception of things, but th- that's the story that Ryan at least has about what happened last week. So I buy I buy that because like also what? Like why, you know, Two years later, they're making up a lie to make Laurel look slightly less bad for something that nobody even cares about anymore. I mean, what is very interesting, and I hate that I'm aligned with Nicole because I did suggest this last week that I like really hope two more stars don't emerge. And suddenly that's what everybody's talking about. Nicole says this and is like, I think Laurel is imagining that two more stars will magically pop up. And Ryan kind of says this later in the episode as part of the reason he's not going to go in. So if the house is starting to theorize, oh, TJ stop saying it's just the st- six star holders and two more stars might materialize, then it does make sense that Ryan and Nicole were saying like, you've got to be, especially with Kara having a star, uh, you're pretty likely to win for the right. women, that star that's up for grab. So why risk it? So if that's their theory, I guess I buy it. Yeah, I love how much they're all reading what TJ says as much as like we do. I feel like they're like becoming one of us. It's like, oh, TJ, they didn't say it this time, so maybe it's not this. I, I do love that they're uh, feeding into that with the uncertainties. So becoming one of fun. us, I-, I could never notice that. I was like, did he has he stopped saying that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe like he's never said it, and they've only put it in post production because we we sometimes don't get the full TJ story. Uh, no, that's true. Um, okay, I do think speaking of not getting the full story, there was a lot of like editing inconsistency and weirdness in this episode where we first hear that Ryan says of the men without stars, he wants to go against Jay. Right. We then hear Jay say, I don't want to go against Ryan. He's my friend. And then 
after the daily that flips and Ryan says, I don't want to go against Jay. And Jay is like, well, I can't go against Steve or Adam or my, or Leroy, my friend, I have to go against Ryan. So did you notice that inconsistency also? Like I, it just felt very disjointed. Yeah. In particular, Ryan, it really flipped. And it just, it seemed like the type of thing where it's like, you're so, you just, you're pumped up to do something. And then it comes to it and you just want to back out. It's like you have, you set plans for like a week from now and the plans are like tonight. And you're like, actually, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not feeling well. I'm going to stay home. I don't feel like doing this. That's what it felt like for Ryan. And then for Jay, like, I don't know, but he just, I guess he was kind of going back and forth. I'm sure they got him to have different sound bites of who he'd rather go up against. So I more felt the more disconnected from Ryan through this episode than, than Jay. Yeah, I, I think Nicole is going to be on uh, the Zach Nichols podcast next week saying that she actually convinced <laughs> Ryan not to go. He was definitely going to go against Jay. Uh, but yeah. do you think that's the right matchup? Like, who do you think Ryan has the best shot against? Um, who should he be looking to to match up against? I mean, Jay's probably not a bad option, but I mean, probably Derek. Like, Derek, Derek Jay, and Ryan are all in that, like, similar mix. I I also like fell off my chair when Ryan was like, I don't know if he was trying to gas him up, but he called Jay the strongest guy in the house. I don't know if that's like per capita strength he was like talking about, but like, I, I don't think like I mean, Jay's a strong dude. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, he's not stronger than like Leroy. Like, that's just crazy to say. So that was a wild thing to say, but I feel like Jay, Derek, and um, who's the Ryan are all like similar ish people that you can kind of max them up and see how they would do. See, I, and I get why, you know, Ryan doesn't want to go against Derek. I feel like Ace is the person I would pick there because mm. while he has been a physical asset, he's, he's Kara's, is he the muscle or the brain? I don't even remember. But he's like, the brain. Oh, okay. Um, he just seems like such a dodo a lot of times in these challenges. Mm. And like, I, honestly, you catch him on the wrong day or the right day, I guess. And I think he'd fold and just give you the win because he's just like too emotionally rooting for you. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'd roll the dice on the roller coaster that is Ace. And we've, we haven't seen him in elimination yet, right? Like this is now his second star just being handed, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Ace is playing the best social game in the house, mm -hmm. which only he's Flora a, is tuned into. <laughs> he's got an ace up his sleeve. There you go. Um, the, the friendship between Ryan and Derek scene was very sweet. Um, I would like to join them in their retirement home with nine cats. Well, not with the nine cats, but with the two of them, like, for mm -hmm. sure. And when Derek says that, my reaction was like, don't tell me this man isn't giving fun confessionals. Like, right. why is this the only thing we're seeing from Derek? Yeah, it, I, I did enjoy, like, them setting up, like, all four of the non-star holders. They all had, like, a, a bit of a soundbite of, like, what they're, they want to go in. Like, even at Steve talking about he wanted to protect the star. It, it was, like, a very much, like, pre-final hearing from all the finalists, like, what their season has built towards. It kind of felt like that way for a lot of the guys uh, before this daily. All right, and then uh, speaking of before the daily, the um... – uncontestable sexiest moment in television history tj dirt biking in back to pony unbelievable a plus take yeah, my money was, incredible it was great emily's favorite song fun fact is pony so there you go that, so that's she, a lot of information <laughs> if she uh, had all interest in watching the challenge she would have been very much liking that scene but yeah i like tj making an entrance like obviously probes doesn't do that anymore like that's not his thing tj like for all those years, he still does his fun stuff. He rides on the motorcycle. He comes in on the, the jet skis. He comes in on the, the monster trucks. He comes in on all the fun stuff. He, he enjoys himself. I agree, but they have to do it sparingly because this was like yes. staring directly into the sun. I, I like couldn't handle it uh, many more times. Um, but he does fake us out. A very big day for the women. And honestly, it was so like overt that I believed it. I was like, wait, crunch his numbers. Like, it's a women's day. And then he's like, because it's a men's elimination. Right. And then, like, again, like, Kara, it, it's the over-the-topness of, oh, TJ, stop doing it. Like, that's where it's, like, I can feel the cringiness. Like, that's where Kara is so complicated because I want to, like, root for her and be on her side. But she is still also quite cringe. So it makes it difficult. But that's where but we they're all apart. cringe. It all stars is cringe. Like, they're all cringe. It's, like, my mom on television, even though they're all, like, my age, you know? It's just, mm -hmm. like, it's just, like, you know dopey old hanging which i love i'm a dopey old like it's and it's it's endearing yeah, um 
Yeah, but uh, honestly, it did only make me nostalgic for which you've talked about a lot. Like when it, if it's a guy's day, it should be a big day for the women and they should be getting like a Fandango prize package. Like there should yeah. be some money prize just needed to put that again into the record. Yeah. Of all of all weeks, this one felt like the most needed of there needed to be a prize for the women. Because at least in the other weeks, there was more like helping people like getting someone into elimination, saving your friends. It felt like there was more at stake still for the women to like want to win and be in a certain group. This one felt like there was nothing for the woman, whoever won. Because Jay, like once he won, he was throwing himself in. So like even the vote itself, you're only voting for one of the two people. And Jay just decides who ends up staying in. So like this one really felt like give him a thousand bucks. I mean, come on. There's got to be a budget that you can like each. There's what? Ten dailies. You can't. You don't have ten grand to toss around to give to the other uh, gender that wins. on don't have to do it every time because there's uh, multiple uh, double eliminations. You don't need to do it on that time. Do it on the other weeks. Eight grand. You don't have eight grand to give to these people. Come on. Uh, step up. See award. The Brian Cohen uh, prize pot. No, I'm telling you. You see it. Oh, see it's okay. I don't have eight grand to give to these people. <laughs> MC, uh, MC oh, Fireball. no, it's eight grand. <laughs> <laughs> eight grand in total. One grand a week. Um, Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting because it stuck out to me as, like, particularly useless for the women to even compete in this challenge because this – keep me honest. This feels like the first individual challenge in at least a few weeks. And, like – at least when you're on a team with somebody, it's like, oh, Veronica was saying, like, I want to keep whoever her partner was safe or, like, Cam and Leroy, like, Cam or her only hurts herself in, like, demolishing the pair. At least there's some interest in, like, helping your person stay out of elimination. But I really like the individual challenge in this setup where, like, mm -hmm. the at-risk gender folks, so in this case the men, can – make their own destiny here and like decide their own fate without relying on their partner or their team. However, the women did not need to compete. So especially okay. in an individual elimination, an individual challenge, we need an incentive for the women to care. There was an individual daily two weeks ago, but Which that was, was when it? it was, that was the one where they orchestrated with the balls on the net. Like that technically was individual, but they're all. Oh yeah, exactly. Okay. So, fine. but in true, <laughs> like you're just doing it by yourself. I feel like they, they, they haven't done that really much at all this season. So, um, and maybe if there were a prize, uh, someone besides Ace would have been motivated to win <laughs> and not mm -hmm. do the plan. They haven't done, yeah, they haven't done any of the big sponsor. Yet. There's no like Burger King event. They haven't done anything really, which is interesting. Brian Cohen, they're waiting final. for you. I guess so. waiting for the you. I I'll say this: the Burger King sponsorship gets me to order Burger King that week, every single season. Whenever they do it, bar none, I will order Burger King in the next couple of days. All right. There you go. If you want four ninety nine from Ryan, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think of the challenge? Though very silly, very All Stars energy. Yeah, uh, called roll with it. Um, in in a shopping cart, shopping cart was making some waves on uh, Twitter this week. People were up in arms about. Do you bring a shopping cart back to the stand? A lot of controversy on the, on the old Is it Twitter. This week, I feel like that's been going <laughs> for a long time. Yeah, there was there was a woman talking about like with her kids. There's like the car, and then there's a whole up in arms. It was very contentious. A lot of fun to read the comments. Um, so yeah, in the shopping cart, you have a lasso. You have to throw it. You don't have to. This is the key phrasing. You don't have to use it, but you can use it to lasso onto a pole, pull yourself forward, and continue on the through the process until you get to the end of the course. Yeah, shout out to Jay. That was awesome. He's the only person who who thinks of this at least and like absolutely demolishes. And what I loved is Ace is like, oh, I'm doing my like redneck stuff and, you know, quote unquote, and I'm prepared for this. And then Jay, and I don't know where he's from, but the energy is certainly that of a Jersey man who just mm -hmm. barrels through and is like, you know what? I've done this in the parking lot in high school. I can get through this challenge. Yeah, it was very like bananas or Wessy to like outsmart the challenge of doing this. And I at first I had a problem with it because like, oh, this like kind of goes against the spirit of it. But it's also out in the open, so anyone can copy it. And I would imagine other people must have tried it, considering he did this and won, and no one else like was able to do it. So I, they probably all tried it and failed. And Jay was just able to do it successfully because it seemed like the the whatever course they were on was slanted downhill because like they, they kept rolling backwards a lot of them when they would like lose track of the the lasso or the the pole and stuff. So kudos for Jay for doing it because I I feel like other people must have tried it. It would be crazy if no one else didn't try it after Jay won. So some are saying he's the strongest man in the house. Some are.
Some are. It's also <laughs> Gabe start. It started to give the vibes of what we talked about last week of like the slowest spike race of people being like, do I cross? When do I cross? We had the debate. Uh, Derek was like, I just can't bring it for myself not to to try to compete and win. I think Ace kind of had a similar thing. So like people were struggling with um what to do. And again, this was we made it fun of like the, the, the question of like, when is the star thing going to end? And I think if people knew when it was going to end, then you would just have people like not going forward and just like stopping. So it's like, you need that level of uncertainty to like make something happen. Yeah, I call shenanigans on this because, like, Derek, I'm supposed to believe that Derek is, like, such an athlete that he can't play to lose and is overcome with the spirit of competition, so simply has to finish the course and end up in the middle group. And Adam is like, oh, I think to myself, if I stay in the bottom, maybe there's a chance. And then, oh, I just foot fault over by accident. Like, a lot of it felt like either – they were told they're not allowed to like not try. And I don't know how you regulate that. Or maybe people are afraid they won't get invited back. So they listen or whatever, yeah. or like if they just retroactively were talking about that in confessionals, but it just felt very weird to get two confessionals of like, it would be better for my game, but I just love the thrill of coming in the middle. Like that's mm-hmm. not a win. Yeah. They, they almost could have done this one. If they were really worried about that, they could have done this as almost like a horse race where you have just like dividers up between all the people and you don't see how anyone's doing. So it does give incentive for people to try to finish because you don't even know like when someone's going to win and you want to try to win. So you have to cross the finish line. That could have been kind of uh, a fun thing to do. Oh, yeah, the other They could have just done this. Everyone goes one at a time without seeing it. And that would have been incredibly boring. So thank God they didn't do that. But like the dividers could have been a lot of fun that happening all at once. Yeah, not interested in a Big Brother style like pre-taped challenge where like we see ten seconds interspliced of every single person going. So I was um, I was so close to making it up, but then I missed the second poll and I rolled back. And then the next <laughs> I know, but I got all the way to the third poll, but then I missed. And I, on this challenge, what I have to do is we would have had a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Jay and Laurel win by a lot, both of them. Uh, the middle group is going to be uh, Ace, and then the fiends for competition, Derek and Adam. Uh, Adam, I will say the silhouette was back and ruined it. I knew that was Adam's like yep. mold. Um, and then Nicole and Kara. And then the losing group is going to be Leroy, Ryan, Steve. Those are the three up for elimination. And then Avery, Veronica, and Flora. Just going to be irrelevant for the episode. Shout out to them. <laughs> yeah, they're just chilling. Good for them. I don't, did Flora even have a confessional? I don't recall her speaking the entire uh, 45 minutes. So. She clocks Ace as a very strong under-the-radar social player, oh. and that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, that's right. So good call there. But yeah, they had a nice chill week. Uh, let's talk about the deal Leroy uh, and Jay make. At the end, so I thought Leroy, uh, Leroy's faith in Jay was all riding on this conversation where Jay makes kind of an unnecessary promise to Leroy. Leroy has nothing to offer him. And Jay just kind of tosses him like, if you're put in, I will save you and go in. Mm -hmm. We later hear from Jay that like they had an alliance since the beginning that Jay would look out for Leroy. But Jay learning kind of nothing from Laurel's show last week makes a big stance on not only Leroy, am I going to save you, but TJ, I will see you in the elimination. Everybody, I am going in no matter what. No lessons learned, much like Larry David. Yeah, to be fair to Jay, obviously he does go in. So he, it truly was no matter what. Because this elimination <laughs> literally was no matter what. Like, it, it was it, – it, we'll obviously get to it. But it was, like, as bad as, like, who could spell the word Steve first. Like, that was, like, almost as bad as it could have possibly have been for Jay. So he really, truly meant it. When he said no matter what, as opposed to Laurel, who sort of, kind of, maybe, kind of meant it. Yeah, he did follow through, and there's a lot to talk about there. Mm -hmm. But um, it it just reminded me of, like, Leroy's unnecessary retirement. Like, don't retire. You don't have to retire. Just Mm -hmm. say you're taking a break. Like, you don't need to say, TJ, I'll see you. That's the power. You have the power. Influence kind of how you want it to be. Stay a little mysterious. And, And in fairness to Jay... That's not his game. He's very upfront. Everybody knows yeah. where he's working, who he's working with. And that's, and that's you know, served him well. But just as a yeah. general note, you do not have to make any promises when you're the winner of the challenge. Yeah, much smarter to be more vague, to keep your cards, cards close to your vet, uh, chest. But for our perspective, 
I love people giving definitive statements and then maybe going back on them or making probably a bad decision to go forward with it. So don't listen to the better strategy. Be stupid. Make the bold statements and uh, and make us enjoy television. I want a bold statement from you. What mm. um, small to big cat would you say you're most aligned with? <laughs> Yeah, this was an interesting scene. What what do they call them? What did he say they were? They the were ocelots. Uh, the ocelots. Yeah, that's fun. That sounds like a minor league baseball team in Omaha. The ocelots. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I can I go with Wiggler and be like the wombat or something. I don't know. Is I think it's cat? taken. Is that taken? We can't we can't share the wombat. I don't know. Type You're of, also not small. I also don't think I'm a cat. Is also the problem. <laughs> what what are you? I don't know. I feel like I I, I give more like dog energy. I think. I feel I like I'm more, more of like, like a flamingo. Oh, interesting. Mm. <laughs> well, you're tall. Like you can't yeah. compare yourself to a little wombat. Yeah. Well, well I mean, I guess yeah, giraffes like the obvious one. Um, mm. I saw. I, I was speaking of giraffes. This Not is a that tall. Thing. Let's relax. Yeah. Well, there's a spin zone out there that giraffes' uh, necks are actually not long. Their legs are short. What? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> like, like a science man said this, or like a joke, uh, like a comedian, a joke man, I mean, a joke man, a, or a science a, man? A, I don't know. It was, a, it was a TikTok. I don't know. But that was like, yeah. a, like so a was, joke man. So probably a jokester. But that's like the spin zone because, like, with the way they have to like bend down to get water, it's because like their legs are so dispor- disproportional to their neck, and people always point to the neck being so tall. But maybe it's just that their legs are really short. It's a little bit like if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll always right. think it's bad. Like, you know, like horses have similar proportion bodies and they just bend their knees and drink water. Right. We're comparing we're comparing giraffes to a field of similarly proportioned animals and saying mm-hmm. its neck is wrong. But I don't think is anyone saying its neck is wrong? People admire the giraffe for its big neck. That's why you were like, I'm a giraffe, I'm tall. Mur, mur, mur. Yeah, but I guess the thing, that's the thing. Are giraffes tall or just their their legs are short? They got the tall. I don't know. Well, they're, tall, they're tall regardless. Yeah, they are. I don't know. So, uh, but mm. back to the original question. What am I? I just don't think I'm a cat. I, I just don't back think that's like my vibe. Um, I don't know. Maybe like a docking, doxer? Little, 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 a doxer? Like you're yeah, someone who calls someone's guess, workplace no, and a dog? gets them canceled? What's the, <laughs> my friend has that. Isn't that, is that a dog? I think you mean a dachshund? Dachshund. Dachshund. Yeah, right. doxer, a doxer, one who doxes. Yeah. Uh, doxing. Incredible. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> what would people rather hear about, this conversation or Steve's detailed but light shower routine? I'm sure the shower stuff. I'm sure people would rather hear that. I don't know. It was weird. And then obviously it like kind of pays off because the idea is like, I just did a light exfoliation Mm -hmm. and suddenly I'm going into the challenge. But I don't think that like really hit for me. But Steve's like bizarre. And that's like kind of cool. Good for Steve. Yeah. Has he ever had, besides the scene with Kara, I feel like all of scenes, Steve's scenes have been like alone. Like, here's how I make this bag Mm -hmm. and work out. And then here's how I shower and like do weird things. Yeah, I mean, he had the whole, like, that was his, like, workout thing, right? When the car was talking about the two types of shows, it was, like, Ace sleeping on the couch or Steve doing some weird workouts by himself in the jungle. So that's his vibe. True. All right. Let's let's chastise Ryan here because uh, mm. Ryan basically has what, what he sa- sets up at the beginning of the episode as his dream situation. He wants to go against Jay. He's recognizing that time's a ticket. He doesn't want to go against Derek. He's got a lot of friends, a lot of requirements. And when push comes to shove... He talks to Ace and says, I think there might be two more stars, so I'd prefer not to go in. Gagged. I was gobsmacked. I was shocked. Disappointed. Yeah. yeah, it's weak. It's it's like it's a different, it's not as a uh, on full stage as Laurel's like backing out, but like it's very similar, like to me. Like, this is very much like this is your chance. Go get your star. It's teed up for you. Again, it's not the worst matchup in the world to go against Jay. Like, yes, he's probably stronger than you, but I mean, Ryan has to know he's going to be out strength almost always in an elimination. He just has to hope other things can go in his, he'll go in his way. So this is it. I, I, I like early in the season, I get it. You want to like be on the show for a while. You want to last. You want to like have some fun, but like you made it almost all the way through the season at this point. What, what else is there for you to do other than take your big swing and get, try to get your start. And you go home this week, you go home this week, you made it almost to the final and you'd be like right there. 
What is hard for me to understand is, okay, Ace suddenly has this like big allegiance to Ryan. Okay, fine. Ace goes to Leroy and Kara and somehow has more sway than Leroy and Steve. Like, I do think other things were going on, right? Like, it's attractive to star holders to put Steve and Leroy in. So that's got to intrigue Nicole and Adam and Kara. There are a lot of star holders in the five middle group members. But as pitched us on the show, it was like really Ryan and Ace who were able to turn hearts and minds here. And Kara is like not interested in executing this plan. And my question is, if Nicole, like why did Ace have so much pull? Obviously, Ryan has pull with Derek. But if Kara and Nicole and Adam wanted to align and vote together, especially with Nicole of like giving who Jay wants, and Kara giving who Jay wants. It's almost like this was an opportunity for the two foes who are close to Jay to like link up and help Jay. I, I didn't think Ace was and Ryan were going to be able to sway this whole group. Yeah, especially for Nicole, I mean, mainly probably for Kara, like putting a star holder in there, it creates the risk that your star could go. Like if you set up Jay versus Ryan, like for Kara, her star is 100% safe because whoever wins is going to test to steal a men's star. But if you have Steve in the mix, obviously he wins. He could have taken Kara's star away. That, that almost wouldn't have – it, it could have easily have happened um, with based off how Kara stands with a lot of people. So it was it was a little surprising that that wasn't much more strongly pitched um, from Kara and Nicole. Of like, we have to save our stars, so we should make sure that no star holders uh, are going into this elimination. Interesting. I'm trying to think of what's optimal because, right, if Jay's not going to go in, then two star holders is the best situation. If Jay's going no, to go bad. in, no, if two star holders go in, the one star holder who leaves, that's the star that gets given away. So, if Steve, yeah, that's true. That's so true. that's that's the ideal situation. If you know Jay's going to go in, then. Yes, then you're in a rough spot. Although I think realistically, there's no world Steve would steal Kara's star. Kara and Steve are, are really close, and Jay's not going to steal Kara's star. So maybe less of a concern for her. But certainly, Adam, you know, this is a big blind spot for Adam. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I have never once been wrong about a man in my entire life. Adam really shows his ass this episode. And, uh, I think one of his biggest issues not in is not voting for Steve is not considering if I vote for Steve and Steve wins, my star is in jeopardy to your point. Very right. specifically, not just my star could be in jeopardy in general, but if I betray my friend, I give him a reason to take my star. What's funny though is he almost got incredibly lucky because he so he pushes for Leroy and Steve, and that's what he gets. And that probably is what should have been the elimination. Like obviously. Jay like was just no chance he was going to back out but like he should have backed out and it should have been Leroy versus Steve and Adam Star would have been the one male star 100% safe so it like it seemed like a crazy move to be like oh I want to have it be Leroy and Steve here so I could try to keep my star when it felt like that was like less than 1% chance that that was going to be the elimination but based off the way the elimination was described that 1% chance was going to hit and it, it sh that should have been the elimination. Yeah, but no credit is given because like Jay's insane and Jay was like telegraphing it. And and right. I honestly think like Jay on the heels of his reputation on the challenge, there was like it could have been literally like get Jenna to go out with you again as the challenge, and he would have thrown himself in. So I, I just don't see any real world, despite how he should have. Like Adam had no way to know that the challenge was going to be Jay's like Achilles heel. He right. should have operated like it was a definitive that Jay was gonna go in. Um, how, do you think, I, I how, yeah. how much do you think is talked about? Like, obviously, when Jay first arrived, like, I don't, maybe they brought it up, like, at the first daily or something like that. But how much do you think, for someone like Adam, he knows Jay's history with the show, that he's here clearly for redemption? Obviously, Jay's talked about it in his confessionals. But, like, if he doesn't know, like, Jay will never now back down for something, especially this this season, he might think there's a chance, like, Jay could just be all talk and he backs out like Laurel. So that could just be like a, a blind spot for him, just not knowing Jay's history. I think he also feels like if Jay goes in, maybe he thinks Jay has a better chance to win. Like made all this lore about Jay. Jay is the biggest, the strongest guy mm -hmm. in the house. Like Jay could take out Steve. Jay could take out Leroy and then they inherit his star. Like I, right. maybe he feels like I want to at minimum put, 
a 50% shot at Jay being the winner and inheriting a star and not even giving the option. Maybe Adam more likely thought that he had more control over Steve and that even if he betrayed him and blamed him and said, it's your fault for being eligible for the bottom five times in a row, glad that Adam's counting, that he still wouldn't take his star and he miscalculated. Mm -hmm. Is Adam challenge stats? Maybe he's the person behind it. He's pulling out all these numbers. <laughs> Challenge stats is way better at actually calculating odds uh, and good moves. Um, although, again, I don't think Adam, to be clear at this point, putting in Steve was like a terrible move for him. Like, I think for all the reasons we just talked about, okay, if Jay doesn't go in or even if Jay does go in, maybe he'll beat Steve. I didn't think that was like a bad defensive move for Adam. Um, my biggest gripe with people at the deliberation stage was that Ace just can't handle being in the house. Like, I... I I think it's good that he's there, that like somebody so mm -hmm. wildly unqualified to play the strategic game is there. And that's fun, particularly in all stars. But at some point you have to cast a vote, man. You don't know any of these people like right. your random relationship with Ryan that you just started is not going to be impacted to the point where Leroy, when his own game is in jeopardy in the arena, has to say, enough like it's okay and i hate right. when the real victim has to comfort somebody who's safe so like i really was like ace has to give it a rest mm -hmm. we need a situation of tina and ace as like a power couple just to see what they would do with unlimited power and what they, they might toss themselves in by the time it's all said and done <sighs> i guess uh yeah the Ace of your friend to everyone, your friend to no one. It's like, just just don't let me vote. You guys don't need me anyway. Mm -hmm. um, all that really Adam or Ace could have done is really swing a vote and tie for Ryan. It ends up being Steve with three, Leroy with three, Ryan with two. So neither of them really on their own could have saved mm -hmm. Steve. It would have just been a tie between Steve and Ryan. But um, And so who knows what would have happened. But maybe if Adam voted for Ryan... Ace would have felt like permission to vote for Ryan. Kind of unclear how yeah. the dynamics of the of the larger middle group would have worked. Agreed. And then I was like, does Ryan even care about Ace? Like, I know right, we get a confessional and Ryan is like, oh, I'm so grateful to Ace. But like, Ace is ready to like spill blood for Ryan. And I don't like, I don't think Ace is like Ryan's number five in the house. There's, and there's just no, like Orion and Ace, like friends right now. There's just no way. Like they're meeting up. Going out together, getting dinner. Like, come on. They're very much moved on. <laughs> um, all right. At this point, did you think Adam was in the wrong? Oh, it looks like I'm wearing this little hat. <laughs> um, I mean, a little bit, but not like to the degree that it ends with Adam taking the the stance against Steve. I just thought, yeah, like he, you know, he's trying to do like the old school that goes Steve's in the bottom a lot. I'm going to vote for him. It's like, if you didn't want to be in the bottom, don't be in the bottom type thing. Like I didn't treat it as drastically to the offense that uh, it ends being ends up being between Adam and Steve. In fairness, it's not a bad point because it's not like in a normal game where it's like, oh, if you don't want to be eligible to go in, win. Well, this is like just finish in the top like six people. So, right. not, you know, not a bad comment there. Let's talk about Shishka Stack, one of the best TJ moments of the season. Uh, just just appreciate that he can say it correctly. And you got it right in the first try. Thank God. I'm, I'm not saying it. So good job by you. It um, took me a long time to learn how to say this. <laughs> just appreciate it. TJ, TJ has so much fun. Oh, he must love it out here. Good for him. Living his dream. Living his dream. Yeah. So TJ explains the challenge, explains the, uh, the elimination. Uh, you have to jump into water, uh, swim down to collect different puzzle pieces um, that are different shades of colors. Color watch. And you have to stack them from dark to light on the uh, three poles. That is, the daily. that is the elimination. Yeah, it was unclear to me at first. I thought like the pieces of the like stacking would connect or not connect like kind of mm -hmm. a puzzle. I still wasn't sure. A few times Steve was like, oh, if this doesn't work. And I hope that was the case. Like I hope there was also like an actual puzzle element so that there was an indication if you were like correct right. or not. Um, but in any event, yeah, you mentioned the color watch. Kate Coulter said, am I the only person who can only think of Brian's color watch this entire elimination? 
I just remember Nicole shouting like, Jay, that's orange. That's orange. <laughs> and I was just like, it's Nicole's color watch in this, in this elimination. Yeah. And then Jay, so Jay gives the confessional. Um, first he starts it off with, I don't really like water. It's like, all right, this isn't really what, like, it's not like an ocean. Well, he says he's a broken nose. So he has to hold his nose. Right. Which is like, okay, that's bad, but it's not like drastically bad that like he should be backing out. And then he describes that he's colorblind, which normally is not a big deal on the challenge, but of this, this one literally is like, you need to like decipher like different shades of color. And if you are truly are colorblind to the degree that Jay is, as he says, he is completely blindly guessing, and there's just no way he could possibly do this at, at any level of a speed that someone who's not colorblind can do. So it's a, it's a really tough draw. And it is funny. I didn't think this was the case, but this is Jay's first elimination because it is, you know, he didn't go into elimination at all on uh, his season battle the axes. He made it to the final without doing that. So this is his first one, and he has like his absolute kryptonite of, you know, if it's not drinking something, it's. You know, doing something with colors, and he's got to do this. So it's, it's a tough break because there's just no way after everything he went through, he was going to back out, especially with the pop and show that he did at the daily. But probably should have. Yeah. So um, Mike Bloom had his interview with um, Jay in Parade Magazine, mm -hmm. and just a, a quick quote pulled about Jay going down here. He said, "That's what I believe to be the last opportunity I had." I would have been more mad at myself if I passed up the opportunity. If I now show up tomorrow and TJ says, you don't have a star, you go home. Why didn't I do this yesterday? At least now I have a chance. It's not a high chance. I knew I didn't have a good chance at this, but I had to take the chance. I would have been more mad at myself if I didn't take the chance. And that's the gamble with this kind of thing. Because like, if, if you have a chance and tomorrow TJ comes and says, that's it, you will regret this for the rest of your life. Even yeah. knowing that you had no chance to win, you always have a 1% chance to win, right? Like Steve could have lost a piece and and you yep. would have won. And the flip side though is if you go home and there are two more stars that unlock tomorrow, you'll feel like, why didn't I wait until I had my like absolute last chance? Yeah. And so I can really respect that Jay can sleep at night saying, I had to operate like this is my last chance and I could live with that more easily than I could live with the alternative. And I, I do respect that. Yeah. And it, it's, it's also the difference of someone like Jay and someone like Laurel. Laurel obviously has won the show before. Doesn't have to do much to get a call back. No one's going to be like, Oh, Laurel, like didn't go in. We're not going to call her back for another season. If Jay like once again backs out and like comes across as like a wimp in front of the audience and then goes home with nothing, everyone's going to be like, all right, Jay, we never, never, never want to see you again. He's like done. So Laurel has that level of cachet that she can be like, actually, JK, I'm not going in. And I also think it's kind of fun. Like, we've now had three people, like three different scenarios play out with like the winner deciding to go in. Like we have Nicole decides to go in, wins. Laurel wants to go in, decides, and then backs out. Jay wants to go in, goes in, loses. So we have like all like the three different pockets of uh results kind of play out here with uh like the winners wanting to toss them into elimination. That's you know kind of fun. Yeah, and if you're playing to return, like you're you're highlighting that Jay needs to kind of do more than than Laurel certainly from you know finger on the pulse of a small part of the audience. I mean, people are definitely rooting now for Ryan and Laurel to uh, get theirs and get eliminated. Whereas yeah. I think people think it's stupid that Jay went in, but at least they respect it. So if you're playing for a million hearts, uh, going in to lose is probably a better shot at returning than not going in. Um, but Caitlin Glancy says, besides wanting a star, do you think the way Jay went out last time affected his decision to go in this time, no matter what the elimination was? For new viewers who might not be familiar with Jay, you want to recap how Jay goes out in his last appearance on the challenge and then did that weigh in here? Yeah, so he battled the exes too. He's partnered up with Jenna, famously now with uh, the host of the Zach Nichols podcast. Um, they're exes together. Jay and uh, Jenna make it to the final as like the layup. Uh, they're going through the final. They reach a stage where uh, in classic final fashion, you have to drink these various large drinks that are disgusting. Jay starts to drink his. And in fairness, they were actually disgusting. Not like they are now where it's like made right. of food. This was like, if I recall, quite disgusting. Quite disgusting. And I think they even, like it was more clumpy. It wasn't just liquid. And I think they even had specific rules like you have to drink it you can't just like throw it in your face and then puke a little bit and be done with it like you have to drink it all i think there might have been like a dozen of them and he couldn't get past the first one has a mental breakdown a little bit starts to cry tj shows up and he has to quit and he goes home in pretty humiliating fashion 
And this is back in the day where TJ really used to give it to you. Yes. Uh, in that situation. This is pro- um, this is one of TJ. I would say if you're like stacking up the top two or three, like TJ gives it to a quitter, like Jay's is like one of the first ones that comes up in the conversation. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like he gets, I think, what he came here for. One, his stock's never been higher to return. Mm-hmm. And two, he gets like the absolute reverse. One of the strongest reactions from TJ you could possibly get. The absolute most respect that he can give and yep. to the point where he's like, I don't know who the guy was from a few years ago, but I'm really glad to see this Jay uh, spoiler. He loses. And he says like, I am really sure we'll see you in the future. You're the most improved, which I don't think is true, but it's still like, um, it, it must feel awesome to get that kind of like redemption from TJ specifically. Yeah. TJ specifically also, I mean, the rest of the players gave him like almost a standing ovation on his way out. Um, able to, you know, hold, hold his head high. Um, so, so good for Jay Nicole bawling her eyes out, seeing, uh, Jay go. So, you know, good for Jay. How is the TikTok transition of Jay changing his clothes? Let's give a lap around the dunk tank. Yeah, that was fun. It was a good, it was a good, uh, run around. I was, I mean, it, it, so Le- Jay does decide to replace, uh, Leroy. And I oh, guess yes, forgot, <laughs> I guess obviously it doesn't work out. Steve wins. Is there like if with disregarding the promise he kept to Leroy, like if you know if he's not going to live up to his word, like would Leroy have been a better matchup for for something like this? I mean, Leroy's not like the most puzzly guy. Like I don't I'm, I don't know. He doesn't have Cam in the audience like yelling out trying to help him. He's a little bit more of a lone wolfy. Like that might have been the better move, uh, just on a straight up matchup perspective. I agree. I'm glad you remembered to bring this up because I actually thought that was Jay's bigger mistake than just going in is I think he undoubtedly chose the wrong opponent. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad cause I didn't want Leroy to go home and I don't think Leroy would have automatically gone home. Like I think it would have been a closer matchup. Just this is not something that I think Leroy would excel in. Mm-hmm. And I don't, you know, Steve from what we've seen excels at these random elimination games. So he's been in enough of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I, I thought that was a mistake. I had the TikTok all ready to go. Like I, I feel like I've seen this song before, and I didn't like the ending of Cam standing there waiting to be replaced, and Leroy standing there waiting to be replaced. I had it all in my head, ready to do it. Jay didn't let me do it, so there you go. Uh, Stephanie Hurt uh, wants to uh, has a question similar to what you mentioned about Cam not being there to help. Uh, she says they must have told the rest of the players that they can't help, right? Otherwise, wouldn't someone shout out the order to Jay as he picked up the pieces, as he picked up the darkest one, say first or something? I guess so, but it's probably tough to describe color, right? It's like, no, take the lighter one. But his whole thing is like, I don't see the lighter one. I don't see the darker one. It's like the whole debate of like, we all call the same thing red but is it actually red because how the hell you, you can't describe color there's no feel to it there's no texture like how do you describe red how do you describe lighter beige to someone that thinks they all look the same so you can yell out things but he could be like this one or this one i guess but i feel like that would take even almost longer than something else yeah what was interesting is the polls did have like a color reference did you notice that they had like a marker mm. So I really don't even think that that was the issue that like shouting it out would have helped for all the reasons you said, but also like there was like a key. I just think if Jay can't see it, Jay can't see it. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, if this was like someone else in like the challenge fear that like there would have been a lot of, uh, oh, the tinfoil hat. They wanted this person eliminated. They wanted this person to win, yada, yada, yada. But also it just goes to show that these things were just predetermined. They weren't setting Jay up. Tenth, the tenth elimination was always going to be this, and it just so happened that Jay got this one. So again, put the tinfoil hats away. These things just happen. You don't hear about it when it doesn't like fit narratives, but like this could have been a great narrative if like, oh, they had to do the one to get rid of Kara or whatever. Like, no, this was just Jay's bad luck. I do think the audience of the challenge is so well adjusted to just like random chance that like I do love that you lecture the audience about the tinfoil hats, but I don't know that the challenge audience is like in that place anymore because we're just mm. so abused by the randomness and like, yeah, get, you know what? Fix it. Make it an eating <laughs> challenge. Make it an eating. Jay's going in. Jay's going to throw himself in no matter what. I want to see disgusting smoothies down there. Mm. Go ahead and go toe to toe with uh with Steve in drinking smoothies. Fix the challenge. <laughs> that's, that's, what I, 
I know this is the main thing I brought up before, but I always wanted to see like a scripted reality show. That way, like not like the behind the scenes, like unreal thing, like have like a show like Survivor or the Challenge, but just script it and like just have it be like a super fun season and like build in those like storylines and like have it play out perfectly. Like something there. wrestling. Eh. Like, but yeah. but yeah. <laughs> no, that I mean that's an interesting idea. Um okay. So good on Jay, claps for Jay, good on mm-hmm. Steve, who wins another elimination and deservedly strips Adam from his star and quite humiliatingly gives a star to Ace, who did vote for him to go in as well, but basically says, I'd rather give it to Ace, who I don't care about, than Ryan, Steve, and, and Ryan, Adam, and Derek, who now I've actually care that they conspired against me. Yeah, and he also he also gives some other reasons, right? Like he says, like, oh, Ryan could have gone in but didn't, so I'm not going to give him one. And I think he's, yet again, another person to be like, oh, Derek's good, so I don't want to, like, give him a star and compete against him, which is another in the in the hat of people talking about Derek being good without him also talking about it. So he gives that perspective. And then, yeah, he gives it to, uh, gives it to Ace. And Ace is just chilling up there. Hell, hey, buddy, thanks for another star. Appreciate it. Um, And then uh, the... the... The, the man of the hour, Adam, gives a confessional that is so out of pocket. Mike Bloom says, who put a nickel in Adam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was wild. I, I, I thought he was joking at first. I thought he was being like facetious. And then when it cuts, like it, it, the confessional ends and then it's like, oh, I can't believe I'm like working up a sweat for this guy. Like, and then, that's like as real as it can. That's almost like more vicious than the confessional. Like to do it like off camera almost is even meaner. It was wild. That, it was completely out of nowhere. I, like people have pointed out, this is like the way Adam like was back in the back in the olden days, I guess you could say. And I guess is we got a taste of uh, Adam 1.0. Yeah, I of course wrote it down word for word because again, I have felt bad all season for being like, who am I to say Adam's like not my kind of guy? And based on mm-hmm. what you just kind of like, he's being nice to everyone. He's talking about how he's evolved, and I'm like, mm, don't think so. Uh, but I think what's like the most, um, I don't need to, let me put down my mic. Let me settle down here. I don't need to be screaming. Um, no, but the worst, so we did get a setup to this kind of all season, but really in this episode, all of Adam's self-proclaimed I've evolved. I'm Adam three, four, five, six point oh. And then we do get the scene earlier in the episode where he's like, oh, Steve and I have been friends. We've kept up over 22 years since, the, since, uh, our real world see our road rule season and blah, 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 the quest and blah, blah, blah. And then because Steve retaliates and takes kind of like a friendly shot at Adam, who's supposed to be Mr. Competition and able to compete and handle it like gentlemen goes off into this diatribe about how terrible Steve is as a person that he's a liar that he's going to make a big significant deal when all he does is win when somebody's at a significant disadvantage. I don't even think it's true. And then this I have to say because it is so brutal. Um, there's a reason you don't have any friends in real life or here. I will never answer a phone call from you. I will delete every text you are so dead to me. And then flips him off and says something even I won't repeat on this podcast. Like... Holy crow, it would be outrageous to react like this if Adam just took your star, if Steve just Mm -hmm. took your star. I could see Steve being like, out of respect, game recognized game, I'm going to take your star. But you took the shot at him and he retaliated and you are a baby. And that's an insult to babies. Yeah, and then he said, like, if you were dying on the street, I wouldn't even give you a drink of water. I'll let the vultures (laughs) go out. I was like, whoa, that seems vicious. Yeah, it was wild. It was an unbelievable <laughs> confessional, completely out of left field, but it sets up a fun rival. I don't know. All stars six, Adam and Steve, pair them together. Someone find me a tweet where Adam's like apologizing about this. Like, I got out of pocket, whatever. Because I will say, look, I say things that are out of pocket on this podcast and podcast. And, um, you know, I just kind of hold my breath until it goes out. It goes out the next day and like nobody hates me and I move on. To have said this on television and it have it sit in the can for two years and now unearth, mm-hmm. almost my heart goes out to like, I hope there has been a reconciliation between Steve and Adam and this didn't hit Steve as hard as it would have hit me if someone said this about me. But uh, I didn't see any tweets at this hour. Not at this hour. Not yet. 
also kind of a flop Tina for Ryan because he probably should have considered that there'd be a big risk of Adam being eligible now to get a star. Like if Steve won, like if you're not in to get a star, you're risking that one of the more powerful star holders would be your competition next week. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Now that they're in the mix. Yeah. Now that Adam's in the mix, it's Ryan, Derek, and Adam vying for a star. I don't like Ryan's chances against Derek or Adam in any kind of competition. No, I mean, Sorry. he got the strongest, he got the strongest guy of the house out. So <laughs> got that going for him. All right. Let's talk about predictions because we have some additional theories. And I do think I noticed something in the previous in the next week on that might be relevant or interesting. Ooh, please. So Share. Uh, here's a, a theory from Catherine Donovan building on your thoughts on the podcast. What if the last challenge was a purge where the last one or two go home and the middle group goes to elimination regardless, only the winner stars would be safe. And that's not a race to the bottom. I think this is the best iteration of the option we were talking about last week. I think dumping the bottom finishers and the middle group being the elimination would be the only way to walk this to the final unchanged. Yes. So there's what? There's 12 people left. That's what we got going on sure. here. Sure. Uh, there were two winners. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. Yeah, there's 12 people. So if you do something like that, let's say, yeah, you have two winners and then you have two people go home. So that's eight people in like the middle group that could go into elimination or they all go Six. into elimination. Oh, eight, eight. Um, I don't know, but I think that's not going to happen because I do think them saying that this is going to be the last challenge. I think this next theory is maybe more likely. Mike mm. Ryan said, my theory is next week is a mini final and that the last and the last chance to get a star would love for it to be. If you have a star, you're safe, but doubt it that we're not getting a traditional daily. We're getting some kind of purge. I don't know. Like, I just I agree. I don't think they're having Kara say this is our last daily and then it's not our last daily. So I think there might be some purge, some like sudden draw right there. What I noticed is if in the in the coming attractions, there are three people moving a maze around like an electric star, and all three of those people are star holders. Nicole, Leroy, yeah. and Kara are who they show. Yeah. So is there a chance that those six compete in that like challenge to have their star safe, and then the rest are chomping at the bit of the other folks' stars? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Like, maybe they split it in two, right? Of since there's also six and six, so you do six and six, and it's like the top four. If the top four star holders, you win this, you punch your ticket to the final, you go in. The bottom two, you go into elimination. For the non-star holders, you do a, a six-person competition. This two time, winners. only the two winners they go into elimination. The other four are eliminated, and that feels like the the right. I don't know if that's right, but that feels like what they're going to do. And I feel like that gives some vindication to like Laurel and like what have been the J. Like if you did have another chance to like get your star, but it also gives it extra credence of like you have a much better chance to keep your star because you really have like two cracks if you were star holder to save your star. So I, I th- as I'm talking, I feel like that's kind of fair if that's what they end up going down. Yeah. And, and it's basically like, you only have to win one challenge if you're a star holder and you have to win two to regain a star if you're not yeah. a star holder. So th- there's an advantage there. Yeah, it's like a double um, elimination bracket where it's like you right. have to beat the team twice to get your star. The, the the winning team only has to win once to keep their star. And I think that's that I feel like that's fair. I can live with that. And I do think the misdirect of all of these people who are quitting to, or who are are deflecting their opportunities to go in like Ryan and Laurel talking about how maybe two more stars are going to appear. That's their idea of like a gotcha. Oh, you thought we'd introduce more stars. No, we're not. It's still six. And you've now got to beat win two challenges. Um, I think, I think I don't want to speak for the audience. If I'm just speaking for myself, I would be satisfied if that's mm-hmm. the the mechanism. Yeah. Especially because also on like this, on the star holder side, you also don't have to like win to protect it. You can either win or finish second and you like you keep your star. It's only if you lose, and then you have to lose the elimination. I, I as I'm, I, I feel like this is like perfect. Also, there's 12 people left, so it's like six and six. This this would be, I would say, pretty satisfying all the way around. Of 
of how they could uh, go about doing this. Agree. Uh, that's that's how it should be. All right, that's it. Definitively. Boom. We've decided if it's nothing else, we're going to hate it and blame production and say they were stupid. For a change. Do we have a song? Music? We do. We do. You know, I've I've heard so I've seen some chirping. People might not like the songs, and to those people, I say I don't give a hoot. Who's are people tagging you? No, I got a, I, I almost I almost got into, I almost responded to a, a Facebook comment said they didn't like the star. I almost someone who asked to join the Facebook group. Wild move to do this, asking to join a group. Says I'm not a fan of Brian's songs. I still let them in because I'm a nice guy. I shouldn't have. That should have been an auto block. I enjoy this. St- I enjoy the songs. I hope other people. Did do someone too. say it in the group? I saw it in the comment. Maybe they deleted it. I don't know. I think the only criticism that should be lodged against the, the song, if anything, is that it can be difficult to hear. It is. I agree. I tried <laughs> so, to figure so out. I can, <laughs> I'm sympathetic to that as a criticism. I tried to figure out a couple of times how to get it to play, and then like it just wouldn't do it. So I'm just like, you know what? I do it. respect the energy of like, this is an audio medium, and you can't hear this, but I don't care. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's your podcast. <laughs> Ours. This one. I, we didn't I, uh, get here. We didn't. We didn't survive ten years caring mm-hmm. about the opinion of the Look, audience. This is this is the All Stars <laughs> Four bit. I don't know if I'm bringing this back for forty. Probably not. It's like the bit for All Stars Four. This feels more All Stars. Each challenge forty feels like more grandioso. Maybe there'll be another AI bot I can try to play around with for All Stars or for All Stars Forty. For we're still around All Stars Forty. God bless us. For challenge Forty. Um, I have been in Brian has an agent mode pitching you based on your affinity for AI. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming your thing. I'll take that brand. I'll take it until it takes over the world. But if it takes over the world, I want the robots to know I was on your side. All right. (laughs) New musical genre. I went with uh, like a a musical for for our boy Jay. This one. Tony season. uh, Yeah. This one's called uh, Hearts, Hearts Wild, Hearts Wild Ride. Let me get it loud. Here we go. So my, look, I have my theater mug. Jay takes the stage tonight. Spotlights beam burning bright. Hands are trembling, voices tight. Heart pounding, ready for the fight. But the ending ain't so Broken, but it's fine. Chilling. Respect grows into twice. Love from the crowd shines. Hearts wild ride, never play. Lost a chance, but won the game. Brothers torn, friends stay true. I think it's giving a little more children's church choir than hmm. Broadway, but you know, I've heard worse songs on Broadway uh, this season. That's know. for sure. Yeah. I want to pour one out for Jay. Jay focused. Who would have thought he should have been on. I feel like he should have been on the cover photo. Yeah. Well, you know, again, it's like, I don't know. I do think the cover folder cover folder, the cover photo was based on who would be a draw. And no disrespect. Mm-hmm. I think Jay's Jay's in contention to be on the next the next uh, All Stars poster. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jay. But, I don't think Jay's name was a huge draw. The fact it was just shocking because that he was on it. I feel like, whoa, Jay's back. That's crazy. Never thought I'd see his name again. I felt like more of the energy, and maybe it was my own energy, was like, why? Like he's gotten rewarded for like constantly mm-hmm. pitching himself after being such an abys- abysmal failure. But casting always knows best. Always, they've never made a wrong decision in their life. <laughs> All right, that's episode 10. You can subscribe. Rob is website.com slash challenge feed. Follow me on Twitter, Cohen Brian underscore. TikTok, challenge wrap ups. Follow you. Nowhere. Uh, NGOG, we're, we're trying to uh, bring it back, but we've got some scheduling differences between myself and the Keeve man. So I'm, I'm left on red right now. Hmm. Uh, confirm no time works Thursday or Friday. So we're doing the best we can. <laughs> All righty. Stay tuned for Saturday. Um, we'll be join here us in the next- Facebook group. Yes. We'll be back next week for episode 11. 
where they better do what we said to get us to the final. Otherwise, we'll be very upset. Until then, have a good one.